All right, Mallory, let's get into our draft talk. All right, so we're gonna break this up into kind of a segment discussions. One's kind of starting things off with kind of more centered around Thursday, the first round. Mm -hmm. um, but that one's kind of limited, right? We kind of know the players who are around there. But then we're gonna open it into players we think are kind of sleepers. These are all Texas players, right? We're using our expertise on Texas colleges. Sleepers that we aren't, feel aren't getting talked about enough. The best potential fit as far as player to a NFL team. And then also, the player we think will be the best player from this draft in the NFL. We come back in five years and we look back and say, this guy was the best. We're going to call our shot. Mm -hmm. We're going to call our shot right now. So, for oh, go ahead, go ahead, Miller. I was just going to say, um, so y'all obviously, are, are you going to watch all seven rounds of the draft? How do y'all go about uh, watching the, the NFL Yeah, draft? I'm going to watch all okay. seven rounds. Carter's locked in. <laughs> Not even going to... There's your answer. Carter's Never gonna, mind. <laughs> let's let's move on. Carter's gonna be that locked in. Let's guy move on. on TikTok. I'm just no, here he's loaded gonna be up. tweeting. He's I'm gonna... here loaded up watching the draft, ready for all seven. Round rounds. seven, baby. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's gonna be like, no. So I, I I've literally had the same uh, routine since I was like legitimately since I was like eight years old when they did when they used to have it on the same day. Pay attention to the first round, mm -hmm. right? More or less, like I'm you know it's, it's I have it on and I'm really attentive. Um, I hate that the broadcast, you'll see like the pick is in and then like 10 minutes pass and then they oh, announce it. I don't yeah, like that they either. They need to fix that. They, they, they know how to make a TV show, I'll say that much. Um, so I'll pay attention to the first round. Second round, I'm like still watching, right? I'm like, okay, I really, I really am curious because a lot of really good names are there. Third round, I start to really kind of find something else to do, but I have it on. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth and seventh round, I will track it on Twitter. I, will tr I have alerts on my phone. Um, or I will have it on in the background doing something else. Right, but I'm, I am like interested. Locked in. Right, I'm interested. Not locked like, in. You're... You'll, yeah, I'm locked in the first two rounds. Yeah. And then like after you that, I do have the key in the lock, but the, yeah, exactly. it hasn't <laughs> turned all the way it's not yet. Like I close the door a little bit. <laughs> You're starting uh, to unlock it at that point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, so I am curious, like I'm genuinely curious where Jalex Hunt's gonna go, right? Mm -hmm. We'll talk about him in a bit, but so that's how I watch it. That's how, I, literally, I, I remember playing video games when yeah. the sixth round was going on. I was like, oh, so-and-so, you know, Cliff Kingsbury just got drafted. Uh -huh. That's awesome, you know? So I've had the same routine. I just hit my mic, I'm sorry. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still getting used to wearing a mic. Um, so yeah, that's how I've watched it since I've been a little kid. I like it, I like it. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. I feel like I'm locked into the first two rounds, especially if, you know, there's a Michigan State player that I'm really yeah, locked into. Yeah. I like to watch to see where they all go. But kind of the same way, like I'll keep up with it past the first and second round, but definitely first round I'm locked in. Because mm. I just – just in general, you recognize all those names. You've watched these these players go through, you know, mm. all these different colleges, especially if there's a bunch of Texas players that we think are going to do well. So, yeah, same thing. I'm locked into first and probably second round. But then beyond that, it's just kind of like, oh, you know – Push notifications. We'll right. see if there's a Texas player that goes. And oh, interesting. But yeah, definitely well, uh, just first, first and second. Really. Carter wears uh, a jersey. Uh, I'm watching. The yeah, I wear my I wear my Cowboys jersey while I watch the sixth round. But I tell you what, we got some intriguing guys from Texas colleges that'll be going on day three that I think could play a long time in the NFL. I was about to say this is going to be one of the more locked in. I think I've been for the later rounds, uh, mm -hmm. for at least through the fifth ish round, because then because th that's about Jalex Hunt range around there. But like, mm -hmm. we'll get into it. Now. Now, uh, let's start up top, actually. Let's go with... with let's go Thursday. Who are you going to watch for Thursday? Yeah, like, I mean, the obvious name is Byron Murphy, mm -hmm. right? He's okay. probably... He's going to go first. He's very likely... that I pencil it like 80% that he is the first Texas player drafted. Um, defensive tackle from Texas, of course. The only reason he didn't probably stand out... I mean, the, I, I do appreciate that he's standing out more because Tavondre won a lot of the accolades. Yeah. And so, but then when they get to the testing and all that, they're like, okay, this guy is kind of probably a big reason why Tavondre Soap was able yeah. to do a lot. Allow me to officially retract my best NFL draft prospects that I wrote in February because I put Devondre Sweat oh. over Byron Murphy. <laughs> uh, this was before the offseason and the combine where Devondre Sweat was like, if I sit for a week, I gain 30 pounds. <laughs> right, so yes. Byron Murphy had a better offseason, I would say. I did see, however, on a mock draft pick mm. that Dane Brugler with The Athletic had the Cincinnati Bengals getting T. Sweat and Byron Murphy. They yeah. need help. <laughs> just on that. running it back with yeah. Texas defensive linemen. Yeah, they, I, need it. they need help bad. I'm going to be curious. I mean, I know we're still on Byron Murphy, but I am curious, like, do people think the arrest, how, how far does yeah. the arrest take to Vondra Sweat? Because, like, I don't think it's something that would be too bad, but, like, that combined with, like, his, like, 
you know, is the issue staying in shape? And things, is, that, is that like, are those like yellow flags that turn into a red flag? It, I think it's exactly what it is. If he had had Byron Murphy's off season, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but yeah. he was already not having a great off season. Right. That's and it's kind point. of just exasperating the concerns people already had about him. And I was listening to a podcast the other day, Todd McShay was on, and he was talking about how after the NFL combine and pro days, like this is the time where guys start to mess up. Hmm. Like true, this is the true. time where scouts really start to lock in their players because they have so much free time. Right. For the first time in their college careers, really. So yeah. I don't know if Tavon just went handled that. That's really a good well. point. That's a really good point. So yeah, he's going to be, Byron Murphy, I mean, is going to be likely the first player taken. The other players who are kind of around there, which I think makes for a very interesting later round, right? A.D. Mitchell from Texas. Mm -hmm. I think Xavier Worthy's kind of worked it. With, with that 40 time, I think he's worked his way into that fringe area. I think he'll still be second round, but we've seen teams trade up just for speed, right? Do <laughs> we want to have the talk of who's going to go first, A.D. Mitchell or Xavier Worthy? I think it's A.D. Mitchell. I think it's probably A.D. Mitchell. Does John Ross running the 4-2-2 and then flaming out so hard actually hurt Xavier Worthy? I mean, you can go back to Darius Hayward Bay. You can That's go, true. You can go, like, the guys that light up the 40 at receiver don't always translate. So yeah. I think... I don't know if it hurts him, but I think it does stop teams from like trading up. You mm -hmm. know, like I don't though. I don't know if teams are gonna. Ten years ago, I think somebody trades up to get him. In my opinion, um, okay. now I don't. I don't see that this year. But I, who's gonna be the better pro prospect? Do you think AD or Xavier Worthy? I think it's Worthy. I mean, no, sorry. I think it's. I think it's AD. That's where I'm gonna differ from you. I think it's Worthy. Okay, interesting. Think, Mallory, you wanna be a tiebreaker? <laughs> we'll just we'll talk about it. But I'm I'm also curious about your opinion. Red or blue, I don't know. <laughs> Xavier Worthy, I don't. I just think they're so similar, you sure. know. And I mean, I I think Xavier Worthy, but here I'm, here's my defense. Carter. I think Mitchell will land at a better team, okay, and will set him up better. Yes, because I have my fit, which we can get to later. But I think I think there's one team that is in AD Mitchell range that needs an AD Mitchell mm -hmm. that will have nothing to do with how good or bad Mitchell and Worthy are, uh -huh. but who will he'll, he'll potentially play with. So that's I, kind of where I'm at. I could see Xavier Worthy going to the Raiders or something. Right, right. It's like oh, okay. just get screwed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. It's like he's probably great. It's like we won't get to see right away because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think Xavier Worthy. He is a very good deep threat. And I think some of that got yes. masked the last two years at Texas because he and Quinn Ewers did not connect very well in those deep balls. But a lot of them, he doesn't have a shot to even catch them. They're no. just That's fair. eight That's yards fair. overthrown. You go back and watch his freshman year when he's playing with Casey Thompson, Hudson Card, he was yeah. the best receiver on the field at all times. I think I he was it. kind of underappreciated mm -hmm. at Texas. I think, there, I think it did get to a point because, yes, I do think it was – when Ewers first got there, we were like, okay, that's weird, but the work on it, right? And then it just never kind of clicked. But then you saw Ewers, it, maybe it was just something between those two, right? Because we saw Ewers connect with A.D. Mitchell. We saw Ewers connect with J.T. Sanders. And like you mentioned, we saw Worthy connect with other quarterbacks. So maybe it was just something with them too. Maybe it was the way that the system was ran as well with Ewers, right? Because as we saw, like Sark has not the type of coach to, not, to like, go guns blazing right he loves like a very methodical approach with like the run game yeah. and like right. things over the middle but that's not going to get the best out of worthy also sometimes Worthy's the guy clearing out a lot of that stuff mm -hmm. right so it's like he goes over the top cool take the safety with you jt sanders out route right so i do wonder if it was like kind of a masking of like what he really could do as opposed to like if sark was say at alabama where they were kind of like doing all that if he turns into more of a Devonte smith type of like just like game breaker type so I think A.D. Mitchell had the wow plays. Like, I think yes. back to the he, TCU game. He attacked game. the ball insanely well. I think back to the TCU game where he literally bends horizontally backwards <laughs> and catches the ball in midair. Or right. the college ball playoff where he double clutches. He double clutches. But he wasn't is... as consistent as worthy. Sure. I, I can agree with that. So, as far as the Texas names, I think those are the three to watch. Um, also, something on Byron Murphy. I yes. saw a Greg Riddle Dallas Morning News story. Do you know Byron Murphy was a running back before junior year of high school? That's terrifying. That is I actually so did see that scary. same article. Yeah. That's terrifying. And Claude Mathis, the DeSoto coach, was the one who moved Murphy from linebacker to defensive line when he took over in junior year. There you go. And the rest, as they <laughs> say, say, is history. Is his history. <laughs> <laughs> so other names to potentially watch, again, in the first round, maybe a Patrick Paul, but because this is kind mm -hmm. of a, this is a really good tackle class. Like, I do think, what, from what I've kept track of, there's like two or three left tackles. 
and then there's like eight right tackles. And mm -hmm. so like a guy like a Tyler Gatton we mentioned uh, from Maynard, he's somebody who's like a right tackle, but like still teams need a tackle. And so But I think Tyler Guyton also was right tackle because Dylan Gabriel was left handed. I'm, I'm not saying I'm not saying that he's he can't play left tackle, yeah, but I'm saying like yeah. he would primarily probably be used at least immediately as a right tackle. Somebody like a Patrick Paul, I think could be a left tackle, but probably right when he goes to the NFL, probably mm -hmm. dome at right. So that's the uh, Patrick Paul's one of the other guys who's going to be maybe in that range, maybe not. Again, maybe we'll, in a different year, maybe he is more of a consistent first rounder. Uh, but I think we were kind of in consensus that there's probably three names to watch. Really one with maybe two uh, as far as the first round is concerned. Okay, let's get into some of our little more saucy takes now. Here we go. Let's get <laughs> the takes firing. Takes. We're either going to call our shot or get old takes exposed. Uh, listen, right here. listen, you got Tavondre Sweat in one of your draft and articles. It, so. look, as we know, I'm not afraid. <laughs> I'm gonna, call, I'm gonna call my shot. All right, let's go with sleepers. Who do we have as your sleeper? Carter, start with you. I do not understand why more media attention is not being given to Luke McCaffrey, the Rice wide receiver. Because, yeah. because right there he went to Rice. <laughs> but he's <laughs> Rice. No, that's <laughs> probably that's the, because he went to Rice. Yeah. But he went to Rice. His last name is McCaffrey, but he, it is. He went to Rice. <laughs> That's but he went true, But if you watch the film, he is cooking dudes. He is. In the American Athletic Conference. He was the Rice wide receiver last year. The next guy had like 300 yards. He had 1,000, yeah. basically. And the one concern I had about Luke McCaffrey was, is the top end speed there? He runs faster than his brother Christian McCaffrey did at the NFL Combine. I was about to say, I he had a 4 4 six, 40, yeah. I wondered, does he have to change of direction? I know he can catch in traffic, but he can, can he change direction? He runs a 4.02 second short subtle, which was the fastest among the wide receiver group. And Matt Barrows of The Athletic had a very interesting piece about Luke McCaffrey where he's been working out with Anquan Bolden, who was a former college quarterback yeah, yeah. turned wide receiver. And the thing that Anquan Bolden said about McCaffrey is he's just so hungry to learn mm -hmm. and so hungry to work on his craft. And when I interviewed Luke McCaffrey for a feature story last fall, that's the exact same mindset I got from him. And I think that's really admirable for a guy who comes from an NFL Pro Bowl, Super Bowl wide receiver father. Right. Christian McCaffrey is his brother, and this guy has no ego about him and wants to keep learning and gets excited about improving and getting told what he does wrong. Yeah. It's, it's often in Mallory, you know, we've done this a couple years now, like we, I often like try to balance like how much I know about these guys versus like, okay, I gotta, I gotta like separate myself from how I feel about them versus like how I think they'll do in the NFL. Right. Yeah. Luke McCaffrey is one of those guys where I've had to like, he is that good, right? Like, I'm, like I'm, I'm having to remind myself saying, like, it's not just the fact that we know that he's, an, he's a thousand-yard receiver for Rice who didn't have other receiving options. Like, he is actually that good. And it's like, no, yeah, he is. Like, you just mentioned his, a lot of his measurables. And everything about him, like, we use that for scouting as far as high school. We look at pedigree, right? We look at, we look at genetics, right? It's his family. It's his environment he was raised in. It's the fact that he was a quarterback until two, three years ago. And it's like, all these things trend towards, yeah, he's there's a good chance he's going to work out, right? Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I really I'm not saying I'm not saying that he's not going to get drafted. Right. I'm just saying there's a saying. reason why people aren't talking about him the way that maybe we think he should be talking right. about, they and that's at, because he went to Rice. They look at Rice and they're like, oh, that's fine, right? Cool. Yeah, exactly. Neat, you know, and right? So right. yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I agree with both your points. Like, I'm very excited to see where he could land because I think that now. He isn't pigeonholed into, you know, where potentially where Byron Murphy is, we're playing for a potentially bad team or something right. like that. He could land somewhere like a Miami, a San Francisco, where mm -hmm. it's like, oh, they know how to use these receivers, they know how to develop. So over this draft prep, I've gone from Luke McCaffrey was a great college player to yeah. he's gonna get picked up by the San Francisco 49ers <laughs> in the fourth round, and I'm getting him on my fantasy team <laughs> right, because right. he's gonna It's be gonna be a Brock Purdy situation, probably. Yes. <laughs> like, no, right, right. <laughs> he's gonna fall like the fifth, fourth fifth round or whatever and he's gonna be like oh okay, star. Cool. yeah <laughs> uh -huh. all right so my sleeper is i don't know if it's a sleeper but somebody who like i think it's a sleeper it probably is if, if you would if i would have said this was a sleeper last year it would have not made sense it's josh newton from tcu mm -hmm. i think he's somebody who everybody saw how the travis hunter game went right in, his, in the in the first game of the season mm -hmm. and they're like cool we're done if he's not an NFL prospect or like mm -hmm. he's getting guys Travis Hunter probably is gonna be like the first overall pick next year <laughs> like, yeah. like there's it's okay he can play it. it's okay <laughs> that he couldn't defend like a potentially generational athlete that was awesome and also let's not say not defend he like Travis Hunter had three again that's not I'm not saying he did not he did not cook him a little bit 
to say he couldn't defend him, he had three really good highlight catches, right? So it's not like it was open every single play and it was like, oh, it's a complete mismatch. It's like, man, who's covering that, right? Who are covering some of those plays against him? It was like Apollo Creed fighting Ivan Drago for the first time. Right. It's like, you, no one knew that was going to happen. Yeah, it's like, it's like he's dead. Nobody knew he was going to kill him. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Um, so, but no, getting back on it, like this time last year, we all looked at him as the best cornerback in the state, uh -huh. right? We all looked at him as a surefire and he's going to get drafted. But his stock has fallen a little bit. The one thing that I do wonder, and I think Dane Brugler mentioned this as well, is yes, he does not have the prototypical size of a modern NFL corner, right? A lot of those guys are the what I like to call the Richard Sherman molds, right? The 6'3", 210 plus, 205 plus pound guys. He's not that, right? Which again could lean, could lend itself to happen to for what Travis Hunter did for those things to happen. What I will say is he's somebody who was a two-star prospect in high school, right? Developed, purely developed, and has just learned and become kind of this, it's like kind of the last of like how the, the guys that TCU used to get all the time under Gary Patterson, mm -hmm. right? He's that, he's kind of one of the last ones of those, of that ilk. So, I don't know. I think that he is somebody who, if he did not, if that game did not get national attention, Mm -hmm. I think he's looked at a little bit better. I think around fourth, fifth round is probably where he'll be. I think he's a day two pick if that game doesn't happen and everybody doesn't sour on him immediately. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Totally agree. All right, Mallory, what you got? I have two. Oh, okay. Okay, I like it. So we'll stay in state for now. Okay. Um, and I don't even know if this is really considered an under the radar type of pick definitely not going to go in the first round because mm -hmm. of the position that he plays and that's Jonathan Brooks Texas mm -hmm. running back yeah as you know running backs that's just not a valuable position I, I don't want to say not valuable it's not as valuable as a position it's anymore in the, in the NFL anymore yeah. right it's just a it's a hard position to play it's a hard position to stay healthy in especially in the NFL so that's why I picked Jonathan Brooks I mean he's he's an athlete he's mm -hmm. got great size six foot I think he's up to 215 now, so he's probably the ideal type size for a running back in the NFL. He's probably going to be a second rounder, but I think he's probably the best running back out of his class in the NFL. Well, you know why it's a sleeper is because if he didn't get hurt and he played the college football playoff, he would be a first rounder. Yeah, I guess it, that's I true. I think so. I think that I think because of you, you remember, which again, a lot of people forget because of how, one, how Texas lost him and still made the playoff, right? right. So it was yeah. like, oh, how good, there probably was a how good is he discussion. But to your point, he follows B. John Robinson, right? Mm -hmm. Texas does not miss B. John Robinson when, they, when he's healthy. Mm -mm. Their running game, it found its way late, but it did miss him, right? It had CJ Batch, it had Jadon Blue, but like Jonathan Brooks was number one before all those guys. The reason right. they lost the Washington game is because they couldn't run the football. They couldn't run the football consistently. And I think that injury, um, it's a combination of the injury, yes, yes, but also, like, I do wonder, like, is he in the... Uh, Taj Brooks had a great a great year, obviously. Ollie Gordon did, too. But, like, is he more in that Doak Walker award conversation if he finishes the year? Right. right. On the, with the pace he was on. Um, I think definitely. Yeah. And then also, I think it's also different. Like, again, people... Bijan just went in the first round two years ago, so it's like, oh, Texas can't have another first round running. So I feel... I, I don't know if there was the, any of that conventional right. wisdom going on or... Or what? But I agree wholeheartedly. He, though he had an amazing year, but it almost felt like he did it quietly. Yeah. Where Bijan Robinson had these runs where he broke eight tackles, and that's Jonathan good. Brooks had very good runs, but yeah. he didn't have the runs that you were like, "Is this dude an alien?" Right, right, right. Yeah. Not that's saying right. he is not a great running back. Yeah, he, he just had mean. to follow Bijan Robinson, which right. very true. Kind of stinks. Yeah, I mean, averaging six yards a carry, over a thousand yards, yeah. like you mentioned. In that he's a solid spot. back. Yeah, solid now, back. I think the Dallas Cowboys right now is what everyone thinks he's going to go to. Right. But we're yeah, going to talk about. I like that. Well, because they because Tony Pollard's gone now too. Tony Pollard, so. and they didn't. Um, I mean, all the free agent running backs are gone too. So like, yeah. there is like a need for that. Type it's of uh, right. Rico Dowdle and Royce. And Whoa. Deuce Vaughn right now. And Deuce Vaughn. Deuce Vaughn. That's it. Mm -hmm. So there's room for a running back in that room. Um, we're going to talk about best fit. I saw honorable mention for worst fit, and that's Jonathan Brooks for the Carolina Panthers. Uh, which that is would also be, a mock that I'm seeing as well. That would be they gross. Have, they have the first pick in the third round, which that's starting to get to that. I think he's a second. I think he's worth a second, but I can see him falling to the third, and Carolina would absolutely jump on that in my opinion, <laughs> which, yeah. which is a problem because I do agree. That is a bad oh, please, fit. Please, for the love of God. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy so yeah uh here's hoping because yeah after this 
I don't know if people were confused or like a little surprised that he declared after getting yeah. injured, but I'm glad that he did because I think people are going to see how good he really is in the league. Mm -hmm. Facts. All right, next. Oh, topic. you didn't get you didn't oh, let me say yes, my no, second right. one. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead, go right. ahead, go ahead. You told us which Michigan State player. No, 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 no. That's <laughs> not what we're out talking on, like, about. Every Michigan State player right now. Don't say. I that. don't think there's a single one in this. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> Did you see our record start. last year? Yeah. We went four and eight. Um, no, no, no. So. This player does not current. He did not play his last couple seasons in the state of Texas. I know you're gonna name. Yes, keep going. But he became a breakout star in the state of Texas, and that's Jacob Cowing. Boom. Arizona let's go. wide receiver, formerly UTEP wide receiver. Yes. I have been on this. I've been on the Jacob Cowing train since he was at UTEP, and I yes. think both of you two were. As well. oh, this predates me. This is you and Ish. This is this right actually. It, I remember talking about him like in 2022 when you were like. Dude, this guy, this guy's good. He's, or 2021, this guy's 21, good. 21, yeah. 2021. So it was he. He was stellar. Him and uh, Justin Garrett for for UTEP. 1300. This is his UTEP stats. 1300 yards uh, before he transferred to Arizona, where he still had a thousand yards. A thousand season, yard and season. Then 848 yards, which they had some quarterback issues this year. So like fluctuated. He still had 13 touchdowns last year. So yeah. 20. Let me see. 27 touchdowns the last three Yeah, him years. and Gavin Hart isn't cooked they, at UTEP. That UTEP offense. Again, let me take you back two years ago. When UTEP had their uh, their best season under Dana Dimmel, their offense was just run the ball for three yards a carry and then just chuck it deep. Chuck it deep. Go look at, I always Cowling. like to reference their stats because their their average per pass was like up there with Army and Navy, yeah. who like again who only throw when it's like a trick, so it's always yeah. like 20, 30 yards. And so UTEP was right up there with him, and they did not run a triple option. They just ran a conventional offense. They just threw it deep so many times. So I love that Jacob Cowling yeah. pick because people cannot forget how good he was for UTEP and kind of making him, I mean, giving them that explosion that season. Well, and here's the thing too. I think that he's flying so under the radar because this wide receiver draft class it's is deep. so talented. It's I mean, so we deep. just talked about two of the best receivers from Texas. Yeah. They're going to go in the first round too, but he's a great route runner. He's great at creating separation. And those are two skills that really, really translate at that next level. So I love that pick. He's probably my biggest sleeper pick, but I think he's going to be dominant in no, the NFL. 100%, especially because, like we mentioned, Gavin Hardison. We saw what, what Gavin Hardison was like when he didn't have him, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, and then Arizona, when Ari Arizona had QB issues, but the one thing they had was Jacob Cowing. Yep. And so, again, shout out to UTEP for putting us on first because they were the first to see him. Scotty O'Hara, the yeah. uh, former yeah. wide receiver coach, he was very big in development. We will season. not forget. We will not forget that <laughs> era. <laughs> All right, now let's transition to best potential fit. All right, I hinted at mine earlier, so I'm just going to go with it. Mine's A.D. Mitchell to the Chiefs, mm -hmm. plain and simple. They have the last pick in the, first round, in the first round. Obvious they need a number one wide receiver. I know they just won a Super Bowl without one technically, but that's kind of one of their last holes on the team. That is why I think that Mitchell could be a better pro than Worthy because Mitchell, look at the teams in the range of that late first round. Jacksonville, give or take, but they have Trevor Lawrence. Uh, again, there is a Vegas in there, so we'll see. Uh, it's <laughs> kind of a little pitfall, but the Ravens, Niners won't need him, but the Chiefs as well. And so all of a sudden, you start looking at those teams, you're like, oh, yeah, like Mitchell could fall to one of those teams that just knows how to use a wide receiver. I think it's the best fit. Obviously, it helps have your quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes, but also it helps if you have a wide receiver who attacks the ball like A.D. Mitchell does and kind of has that alpha mentality. The best case scenario that we can have for a Texas podcast is Xavier Worthy and A.D. Mitchell go to the Bills and Chiefs. Oh, that'd be great. Or the, yeah. or the Dolphins. I'll do the Dolphins, too. Yeah, I would like for... the Dolphins. Can you imagine Xavier Worthy and the <sighs> baby teal? How fast he'd look? Man, him, Hill, Hill, Tyreek Hill, Hill Xavier Worthy. Oh, my Devon God. Devon A-Chain. See, I want that a lot better, because, a lot more, because can't you kind of imagine Xavier Worthy going to the Chiefs and being kind of the next Miko Hardman? To That's my worry. Tony, That's my worry. Where he becomes the new scapegoat a yeah. little bit. If he doesn't get 1,000 yards receiving this year, it's like, oh, Worthy bust. You yeah. know? Right. Like, yeah. See, here, I'll go next, too, yeah, because I had, I had Xavier Worthy going to Kansas City mm -hmm. as a best fit, and then I had A.D. Mitchell for the Bills. Okay. And the okay. reason I chose I that, that. I, I chose Xavier Worthy for the Chiefs because he reminds me a lot of Tyreek Hill, one of the yes. fastest guys, obviously made history in the NFL Combine with the fastest 40 time. But he reminds me a lot of Tyreek Hill. And since Tyreek Hill's been gone, I feel like that they've been looking for that next fastest guy, and that could be Xavier Worthy. But I'm, either one, I think they – 
that you can't go wrong with either receiver it's scary at to this think point. About, but it's scary to think about the Chiefs with either one. Right, right. Now, right. <laughs> it's very scary. Yeah. <laughs> but I do like I do like the Bills mentioning because they just they basically just sell, sold everybody this offseason. Uh-huh. Stephon so, Diggs, yeah, like yes, they need somebody. They need somebody. So I actually that is a name I did. That is a team I did not consider potentially trading around, seeing if they can mm-hmm. get somebody late in the first or early in the second. So that's actually a really good fit. Yeah, What's I'm gonna go with a less flashy position. Okay. And for my best fit, I'm going TCU guard tackle Brandon Coleman going to like Houston, it. I Texas. I like it. That's a good one. That's your boy. You just you did a good story <laughs> on him earlier in the year. Yeah, Brandon Coleman, a former select basketball player in Germany, yeah. translates that athleticism to TCU. What do you do when you find your franchise quarterback in CJ Stroud? You got to get guys to protect him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And right now they have Laramie Tunsil, who is about to be 30 years old, coming off of surgery. The line last year was about 15th in the NFL and sacks allowed. A lot of that was masked by C.J. Stroud's mm-hmm. mobility. The line was a little porous, and we saw that in the run game. I think Brandon Coleman would be a great fit in maybe the third, fourth round for the Houston Texans because he can play both sides. Too. Sure. He can fill in for Laramie Tunsil. He could also be a guard in yeah. the interior. Yeah, I was about to say, that's, that's what kind of makes him intriguing is that, yeah, if you think you can get two, three, four more years of production under Tunsil, I don't know how big his contract is, but you do just got to start looking for that next guy. Anna Coleman is a little bit more of a, a budgetary pickup. He's not going to hit you cap, you know, he's not going to be a first round pick, so he's not going to hit your cap really well um, or impact it a lot, I should say. But he's somebody who, as we saw this past year, I mean, that offensive, people don't talk enough about the offensive line when TCU made the title game. People don't talk enough about the TCU draft prospects because they had a tough season last year. Mm-hmm. And it's like all these darlings that played basically the same. The overall team was worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all these guys played basically the same the next year. When they played the national championship. Yeah, yeah right. Ago, and yeah. everyone's like, we're just not talking about them anymore. Right. That's a good point. Yeah, because you got Newton and him and then Mark Perry's another one as well. So, man. Jared it, Wiley. Jared Wiley. Yeah, we'll get to that guy. We'll get to we'll that get to guy in a second. So, yes, that gives... Uh, that leads us to our last topic, mm-hmm. which is the one that we're just going to call our shot right now. The best player from this draft, from the state of Texas. And yes, my pick is that dude, Jared Wiley. Jared Wiley. Tight end. That was listen. mine, too. Listen. <laughs> I can't believe both of you have this I know. Pick. Look, listen. It took, look, when he was a, when he was a prospect, it was hard for me to see the translator. I didn't follow him on the recruiting circuit, so I didn't see him in camps and all that. He was recruited as a tight end, even though he was a quarterback, right, at mm-hmm. Temple. So it was hard for me to see that translation. He's at just Texas, happy. he got hurt. So I was like, okay, I, yeah, that's, that sucks. Former five-star, blah, 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 just didn't live up to the hype. This past year, TCU just, like, unlocked a new level. He's a great blocker. He's a great blocker. He is a tight end who is, it, like, if you put the silhouettes of him and Brock Bowers, like, you can't yes. tell them apart, right? Obviously, Jared White is taller, but, like, Brock Bowers, like, you know, I, I get it, right? He's Brock Bowers' production levels off the charts as well. Mm-hmm. But, like, if you just put them in a silhouette, don't look at their stats, you're like, which one's the first-round pick, right? right. Yeah. You really don't know. If he can stay healthy, and that is an if, because that is something that has that hampered his Texas career, that is something that, that is a reason why he could not really be the focal point of the entire offense his entire time at TCU. It's because of its injury. I think he's a star in the making. I think this past year was just a little taste. And if you look at the best tight ends in the NFL, they aren't always in the first round. Mm-hmm. They're in the no. second, third, fourth round range. You get the value. You get the value, exactly. So I'm going Jared Wiley. I'm calling my shot. We're going to look back in two years, three years, four years, and be like, he went where? Fourth round? Because tight, yeah. tight end's that piece where you don't get like a top 10 tight end. You're a compete, competitive team that then adds a tight end and right. becomes so much more dangerous because right. of it. Right. I'm going to go for my uh, best pro is someone you don't get to just add to a competitive team. You, that's who you've got to get in the early rounds, and that's Patrick Paul, mm-hmm. uh, Houston, Houston right tackle. Mm-hmm. He was three-time first team all-conference. He was DCTF's best lineman last year, and by the way, he did that in the group of five and then in the Big 12 that last year. Mm. He had two sacks given up and 1,034 pass-blocking opportunities in the last two seasons. And he had the national best pass blocking grade among tackles, according to PFF, last year. And oh, by the way, Cherry on top, his brother already plays in the NFL. Chris Paul, the other Chris Paul yeah. on the Washington <laughs> Commanders <laughs> offensive guard. He's got the NFL bloodline. He's got the production. He's got the signs, size. I don't see how it doesn't work out. Yeah. He did an interview on uh, Twitter. I don't know if you saw the interview. I think it was with, I can't remember who it was, with Stadium or somebody. But he said a lot of teams expect, a lot of teams have uh, way different draft boards than public mocks. He basically said, expect to see me late Thursday. 
Mm, okay. I like <laughs> so that. Right, I like that. He's confidence. like either either somebody has told him something, right? Or he's confident that yeah. like somebody's gonna move up for him. Because this like I mentioned, this is a really good tackle draft. Um up top, but also very late. Teams like the Cowboys who need to get younger on the offensive. Now, line. if he really wanted to call a shot, he'd sit in the green room at the NFL draft. I know, right? Yeah, he's, he would just show up. He wasn't invited. He would just show up to the green room. But I'm just gonna, just gonna park it right here, y'all. I'll see, I'll see y'all in a bit. Uh, so yeah, that was. I mean, what were you gonna say, Mallory? Sorry. I was just gonna say, here's the tough thing to me about this question yes. is that. Obviously, you can be a great player, but if you're not picked up by the right team or put in the right system, yes, it's tough. It, it's it's to me. I always think of like, I think Mac Jones was a great quarterback at Alabama. Sure. I don't think the Patriots were necessarily the best fit for him. He wasn't a day one starter. He, no, yeah. no. And I think that that obviously is leading, leading to where he is now and kind of his, his right. stock falling a little bit. But that's what was so hard about this question. It's like if these players don't go to the right team or if they're not, they're not you know, being utilized to their full potential, it's sure. like how can you tell who's going to be – the best player sure. until after the draft, right? So let's redo this question next Wednesday. Yeah, you're right, that. exactly. Well, that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get a mulligan next Wednesday when we all figure out exactly Yeah, literally. <laughs> like, Jared Wiley goes to the Saints, then we're redo. <laughs> right, right. He's like, oh, Jimmy Garoppolo? Let me, uh, <laughs> or, or no, not Jimmy Garoppolo, Carr. I think it's uh, David, uh, Derek same Carr. Derek Carr, yeah. I was about to say, they're like the same brand of Jimmy Garoppolo, basically. He <laughs> literally. You got um, Jimmy Garoppolo at home. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, so no, I, that's a great point because, like, there are so many players here where we think we just mentioned our best fits, things like that, right? Yeah. Andy Mitchell, Chiefs, which they're in range, but also they're one pick away from the Panthers, right? Like, yeah. So exactly. it could easily be, like, <laughs> he could really be struggling. Like, oh, my quarterback can't see over his center, so like, <laughs> I can't get the ball, so that's going to be a problem. So, All right, exactly. so with that being said, that'll wrap up our NFL draft talk. NFL draft, again, starts Thursday, first round, and then, of course, I don't need to plug the NFL <laughs> draft yeah. or anything, but you get how the if schedule you don't know works. where to find the NFL draft. Uh, have you heard of the NFL, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> what does that stand for? I National no something something. I don't know. But anyway. National here. Flowers League. How, how it's on Sunday. It's where weird. is the draft this year? Do Detroit. We is it Detroit? Detroit. Okay. Nice. Really? Because I was in a – when I went up to see Michigan State basketball came two years ago, they all – it was – downtown Detroit was decked out for the 2024 NFL draft. Yeah, wow. So goodness. I've got pictures and videos of all of it. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's in Detroit. That's Next tough. Year. It was in Nashville last year. If you waited to declare one more year and you go to Detroit now instead of hey, Nashville. Detroit's cool. <laughs> go Lions. By the way, man. you know where it is next year? I just, this is gonna be actually pretty funny. No, mm, it's Albuquerque. It's <laughs> close. What? I, weirdly, uh, Green Bay. <laughs> Oh, wait, really? <laughs> yeah, it's in Green Bay. <laughs> Which, this. again, historically, sure, makes sense. But also, Green Bay is like okay. a tourist spot is very funny to consider. But yeah, anyway. it is. Uh, so, yeah, that'll do it for us.